Hello everyone. Welcome to Power Electronics Tutorials. In this video, I am going to discuss the working principle of a boost regulator. In one of my previous videos, I have discussed the working principle of the buck regulator. In a buck regulator, the average output voltage is lesser than the input voltage. That is, a buck regulator steps down the input voltage. I already have made a video on that. You can watch the same in the link that is shown in the top right corner right now or I will leave the link of the same in the description below. On the contrary, in a boost regulator, which is the topic of this video, the average output voltage is greater than the input voltage, hence the name boost. So, a boost regulator steps up the input voltage. The circuit for the boost regulator is shown in the figure here and is constructed using a MOSFET which acts as the control switch and a diode which acts as the uncontrolled switch. The inductor L is connected in series with the supply so that when it stores energy, the output will see a higher voltage than the input. The filter capacitor C is connected across the resistive load and therefore the average output voltage is equal to the average capacitor voltage. The circuit shown here can also be represented by two switches replacing the MOSFET and diode as shown in the switching representation shown here. The MOSFET and diode act as two single pole single through bidirectional switches. That means when one of them is on, the other one must be in off state. The overall working principle of the circuit can be divided into two modes based upon which switching device is on. Let us start with mode 1. In mode 1, the transistor switch is turned on at time t is equals to 0 for a overall duration of let us say t1 seconds. The equivalent circuit for mode 1 is shown here. You can see the MOSFET is on and the diode is off. Since the MOSFET is on, the voltage across it is ideally 0 and is shown in the waveform here. You can see between 0 to T1 where T1 is equals to K into capital T, the voltage across the MOSFET terminals is 0. The diode DM is turned off in this mode and therefore the load and supply are disconnected in mode 1. The inductor starts storing energy and therefore the inductor current starts to increase. This can be seen in the waveform here. This is the waveform for inductor current. You can see the inductor current linearly rises. Let the minimum and maximum values of the inductor current be denoted as I1 and I2 respectively. The next waveform shown here is the current I1 at the diode anode terminal. As the diode is in the off state in mode 1, the current I1 is 0 in this mode. The next waveform is for the capacitor current IC. To understand this waveform, let us go back to the main circuit. You can see that the inductor current IL when diode is on is split across the capacitor and the load. Therefore, the capacitor current is equal to inductor current minus the current across the load. Since in mode 1 diode DM is off, the current across the capacitor is equal to I0. However, since it is flowing in opposite direction, I can say it is equals to minus I0. Now, since this is a regulator and current across the load is always held constant, the current across the capacitor is equals to minus the average value of the load current, which is IA, which is what is shown here. So, the current across the capacitor in mode 1 is equals to minus IA. The capacitor starts to discharge through the load resistance and therefore the capacitor voltage starts decreasing and this is shown in the waveform here. You can see the capacitor decreases during mode 1. This mode ends when the MOSFET is turned off which actually happens at time t is equals to t1 or equal to kt. Lastly, coming to the waveform for the load current, since it is a regulator, it is supposed to be constant and equal to IA. 
Let us now move on to mode 2 and the circuit for the same is shown here. Mode 2 begins when the transistor is turned off at time t1 exactly. You can see the transistor is off. In the previous mode, the inductor stored energy which is now released to forward bias the diode dm. The load and the supply are now connected and the inductor current is equal to the supply current. This is shown in the waveform here. You can see in the mode 2, inductor current is equal to supply current. As the inductor is discharging, the inductor current starts to decrease as shown in this part of the waveform. The same current flows through the anode of diode dm as well. Therefore, the same waveform what is shown across mode 2 for the IL appears across the diode anode for mode 2. To understand the waveform for the capacitor voltage, I go back to the mode 2 circuit and note that as the capacitor is now connected to the supply, the capacitor now starts to charge and the voltage across it linearly increases as it charges. Therefore, when I come to the waveform, you will see the capacitor voltage is linearly increasing. Coming back to the waveform for the voltage across the MOSFET, we note that the MOSFET is currently off and the energy released by the inductor is added to the supply voltage and therefore the voltage across the MOSFET terminals increases as time progresses in this mode. This continues until the MOSFET is turned on again in the next cycle which happens at time t which is the overall period of the switching operation. Lastly, coming to the load current waveform, we note that the load current continues to flow in the same direction in both modes and is constant. That is why it is denoted as IA which stands for the average load current value. So, to summarize, a boost regulator produces a higher average voltage at the output than the input. If I were to plot the instantaneous output voltage waveform, then it would be zero in mode one because the load and supply are disconnected and it would be equals to Vs divided by one minus K where K is the duty cycle for mode two. Since the maximum value of the duty cycle can be one, the minimum average voltage at the output is equal to that of the supply voltage. Right. That is all about the discussion on the working principle of a boost regulator. In my next video, I will discuss the mathematical analysis of the boost regulator. I will also simulate the boost regulator using the RCAT piece by simulation tool to illustrate the working principle. If you like this video, kindly like and share this video and subscribe to my channel for more videos on power electronics. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.